Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be running you through the top three things I learned from playing Ministry of Sound in London. Now, before I get into this, I just want to kind of preface this video by saying that my goal is to try and go from essentially a nobody DJ or a DJ that kind of just teaches tricks and tips on YouTube and Instagram to a DJ that is headlining festivals. That's my new project. That's what I'm trying to achieve. That's what I'm putting 100% of my time and effort into. Now, why am I making these videos telling you this? Well, because me, like most of you, have a phone full of Instagram, which is full of DJs who are playing huge festivals, right? And all I see all day long is DJs playing the biggest crowds, the biggest festivals. And here I am as a DJ not doing that, going, how are you doing this? Like, how did you get that opportunity? I really want to know, right? And I thought, well, what I want to do is I want to take you along on this journey with me, right? So one day when you see me in front of a huge crowd in Las Vegas or in Ibiza or in a festival somewhere, you will have known the exact steps I've taken, right? Because it's so frustrating when we hear people like Martin Garrix go, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And it's like, mm, that's not advice. Like, tell me exactly how you did it, right? So what I'm doing is I'm telling you the whole process. So as we know, I'm just going to give you a recap up to this point. First things first, I make a ton of my own music, right? Second thing, I've been getting in contact with music managers from DJs who make very similar music to the music I make. I'm just reaching out to them saying like, hey, you know, like, what do I need to do next, right? And the thing they've told me that I need to do next because the end goal, let's say, is Ibiza. They're like, the next thing you need to do is kind of get your music signed by a record label. That will help you get a lot more streams on your music on Spotify. Because it, here's the thing, right? People don't care about how many numbers your song got on YouTube. It's one of these frustrating things. They wanna know what's your Spotify number, you know? So, and that just so happens to be one of my weakest platforms. So now I'm trying to grow Spotify and I know the next step is to get signed to record labels. I'm going through a load of stuff to do that as well. Um, now, let's get straight into the actual video, which is why you're all here, which is the three things I learned from playing Ministry of Sound. Now, the one thing I want to say is this is a big relevant moment for me, right? Like, why is this a relevant moment? Well, because if I'm honest, up to this point, the DJ gigs I've done have been open format, which is where you just turn up and you play whatever the audience want. And if you're playing Beyonce and the crowd are happy, you carry on playing Beyonce, right? And the other gigs I've done have been like corporate events or private parties and stuff like this. So this is the first time I've actually played at a club where the club go, it's house music. You've got an hour. Good luck, you know. And that's freaking awesome because that is what I want. Like when I go and see my favorite artists, they're not just doing open format. I'm watching them do the music that I came to watch them make, came to watch them DJ, right? That's You see the difference between the two? It's like one of them is you're playing exactly what you want and the other one is you're playing whatever the crowd want you kind of got to play what the crowd want as well. But the difference is that the crowd are there to you play house music. I'm rambling now and I want to get to the point. So here's the three things I learned. The first things first, what's awesome is when you turn up to a house event and you play house music, you get zero requests. You don't even get people attempting to request music. This is crazy, right? Because you're there playing house music and it's like the audience trusts you. Like that was the craziest thing. It was like people were just like, that DJ knows what he's doing. And so I'm not even gonna attempt to tell him how to do his job, which is bizarre, right? I mean, it's just crazy. That, that for, for all you DJs out there who have gone and done open format events and private parties and stuff, that is insane, right? Okay, so that's the first thing. That was the big thing that was like, well, this is interesting. Right, the second thing is, it really made me focus on what music I really wanted to play, right? Now, I know I put up another video talking about how I prepare for DJ sets and I got some shtick for it because people were saying, oh, you've taken all the fun out of DJing by not doing it live. But the people who were kind of complaining about that and not fully getting the difference between playing a house event and playing open format, right? When you play a house event, you are putting on a performance, you are preempting it. Like when you go and see David Guetta live, 
at Ultra Music Festival, he is not guessing on the spot what to play next. Like he knows exactly what he's playing. And this is my first taste of that. So second thing I learned was, was exactly this, right? It's like, I can play whatever I want. So what am I gonna play? And I was like going through and picking out like, what songs best kind of represent me? Now this is really, this is such an interesting thing to do as a DJ. It's like, I've got one hour to play the best of what I think is good, right? And like, I don't know if I'm even explaining this very well, but this was a big moment for me. Cause I was like, well, not only am I playing my own tracks, like tracks that I've made, I'm thinking, well, what other tracks complement the tracks that I've made? It also made me kind of step back and go, do the tracks that I have made represent me? Right? I mean, this is this is kind of layered, this is like Inception, we're going layers deep now. It made me take a step back and think, what exactly am I? Like, what DJ am I? What exactly is that music that I want to be? What exactly is my slither of music here that's like, if somebody was to say, you got to go and see Phil Harris, he is dot, dot, dot. What is that thing? And that is a fascinating thing for all DJs to question at some point. Like, if you were ultra, ultra famous, what are you known exactly for? This will help you in terms of your song choice. This will help you in terms of when you're making music, you can step back and go, is this music that I'm making actually me? Like, would I be proud of this? Would I, if this was a song on Beatport, would I buy this song to play it out? So I'm not going to ramble too much more about that, but that, both of these points are so like deep. It's like not being asked to request is mad. Being able to play exactly what you want and question what kind of a DJ you are is huge. And here's the other thing, right? I've put loads of DJ sets out on YouTube before. But there's something about, you know, and obviously in those moments, I choose whatever music I want to play, right? But there's something about saying, this is an hour, this is your time stop, go and find music. It kind of just, it hyper-focuses you. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing was just how awesome it is to watch people dance to tracks that I've made, right? I mean, this really is, again, it's like Inception, going to another layer deep with DJing. It's like playing a track that's a famous track and everybody screams is one thing. But watching people dance to a track that I've made, and when I say I've made it, I mean, I've literally sat there and listened to a thousand like snare samples. <laughs> and, oh, that snare sample, drag it in, repeat. And that drum sample, like bass line, 50 different bass lines, different sounds, you know, like the whole thing of making a full track. And it's amazing that I just stood there kind of going click, 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 click. And then suddenly you've got this whole dance floor dancing and grooving to a track that you've created. is insane. I mean, it's honestly absolutely incredible. So another thing for you is, you know, and I know I say this all the time and I sound like a broken record, but if you are a DJ and you're not creating your own music, you've got to begin. You've just got to get into it. Even if you're just starting off making a couple of mashups on your computer, you want to get to that point where you're making music that is is you, is your sound. You know, like, and again, I don't want this to just turn into a mammoth uh, video, but I'm sure the people who are still watching this are getting value from this. So I'll, I'll tell you this, where I'm at right now in my journey to Ibiza is, is trying to do exactly that, define a sound. And there's something that's kind of like, kind of winding me up at the moment, which I'm just gonna share with you, right? Which is, what I hear of some people is, you've got to define a sound that is you, and that sound has to be different, right? And this is a frustrating thing, because it's just, it doesn't make any sense, right? Here, what, here's why it doesn't make any sense. I might go to my computer now and try and create a sound that's brand new, that no one's ever heard before, right? And then I put it in with other songs that I've made that are more typical songs you'd hear, like, you know, kind of standard songs. And then people say, well, all your music sounds kind of different. Like, you have to have one sound. And it's like, okay, well, here's one sound. And are like, well, that's kind of generic. So you've got to come up with something unique. <laughs> so you make up with something unique and then they say, well, all your music now kind of sounds like it's coming from different artists. And it's like, oh, oh my God, like this is so frustrating because every time I make a track, it's weeks and weeks of my life. And it's almost like people want you to 
find one specific sound and then repeat that over and over, but your songs can't sound too similar to each other, your songs can't sound too similar to someone else's, and they can't sound too different to one another. Woo, it's a minefield. But I'm just going, I'm just chopping away at this. I keep just banging away at it. And I got so much unreleased music that I want to just release. Um, but I want it to be released the right way because when I put music up on Spotify, it gets like, you know, 10,000 people listen to it. And I know if it's released the right way, I'll get 100,000 people who listen to it. And that's the name of the game. So it's not, you know, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than YouTube where I can just spit out a YouTube video in 10 minutes, you know, like, so anyway, I'm rambling now. Those are the biggest takeaways. And I'm gonna continue to do this. I'm gonna continue to tell you about every single step of my journey, my frustrations and stuff. And maybe no one will watch it, but what'll happen is one day when I've made it and I'm on a huge stage with other famous DJs, and maybe at that point, someone will go, oh, how did Phil do that? And they'll come back and they'll find these videos from my history where I talk about exactly how I got there. And I know it's gonna help people. Um, so there we go, that's the end of that. Uh, you know, any questions at all, you just let me know in the comments section. You can follow me on Instagram, Phil Harris Music. I obviously sell DJ courses. You all know that by now. I teach people how to make their own dance music. You already know that by now. But I'll leave comments, li uh, links underneath, uh, underneath this video. I'll see you soon. Ciao. <laughs>